kubisa tunausa ngombe turau kupitia hii nyasi na tunafurahi kabisa kwa sababu ya hii maji na kwa sababu ya nimepanda nyasi sichakosa pesa ya kusomesha watoto Quality pasture and water are critical components in livestock production as they aid in improving livestock's body conditions. They are, however, factors that are scarce in pastoral communities in the arid and semi-arid areas. This scenario has further been worsened by the effects of climate change, the common one being prolonged droughts. Baringo being a livestock-dependent county is no exception. In response to the prolonged and recurrent droughts in the county, the government of Kenya initiated the Multinational Drought Resilience and Sustainable Livelihoods Program, DRSLP, through the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives to enhance drought resilience and improve sustainable livelihoods of pastoral communities here. In Baringo, the program has established many structures, hay sheds, commercial pasture demonstration plots, boreholes, earth dams, water pans, and rehabilitated Kiboi irrigation scheme. The RLSP has also supported the communities in terms of pasture establishment, commercial farms, as well as uh, the demo farms, in order to ensure that there is uh, conservation and better utilization of these uh, grasses or the pasture. I've constructed three A-sheets where the farmers are able to store their, their pasture and be able to utilize during drought. We have Kiboi, which has a capacity of 20,000 bales. We have uh, Kui Kui, a shed which has a capacity of uh, 15,000 bales. And we have Muchukwa, which has a capacity of uh, 15,000 bales. The Kui Kui hay shed, located in Barwesa Ward, has aided the community in storing harvested pasture to be used during the dry season when pasture becomes unavailable. Before the interventions of the DRSLP project, we had many challenges, especially on issues of, uh, of uh, getting the quality pastures uh, for livestock feed uh, during a dry season, and also in bulking of the seeds for replications of the same by other farmers. We started developing this in the year 2015. Now in the year 2015, we started with the plot itself, and the plot itself is about 33 hectares in total. Now out of these 33 hectares in total, we carved out six hectares for seed production. For the last two seasons, the community has harvested about 6,000 bales of hay and benefited about 3,031 cattle and 4,456 sheep and goats, helping to reduce the livestock mortality rates and improving livestock live weights. The Kuikui hay shed has further been a blessing and helped increase the enrollment rates of children in schools. In the past, children would fail to go to school due to ill health, and with this, the rate of school dropouts was very high. 
walikuwa na wacha shule katikati tulikuwa tunaona mbaya kama kina mama kwa sababu mtoto akirudi ni mama anakuwa mtu wa kwanza kupokea kutoka shuleni tulikuwa tunaona mbaya tunakaa na watoto kwa kwa, kwa village tulikuwa tunaona sijui tufanye nini lakini tangu siku hiyo watoto wetu wanahusiwa ngombe wanaenda kusoma shule mpaka tu shule fungwe wanarudi tunakuja kukaa pamoja kupata tena pesa kwa mbeku hasa mimi kama mkulima kama mwandishi kama bene bit yangu kabisa mimi hata mwaka huu i2021 nili nili nilifuna nikapata 22 kilos alafu nikapata 1013 kwa sababu niliusa tu kwa kwa kilo uh, kwa kilo ya hiyo ya hiyo hiyo mbegu 600 nikapata 13200 alafu kuna wengine 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 sangu wengine waka wenye wale baitika capacity building and establishment of the pasture demonstration plot by the program has enabled the farmers to access pasture seeds easily leading to increased adoption of pasture establishment and conservation activities within the Barwesa community mimi ndiye mtu wa kwanza ninovaeke kwa sababu ya hiyo mrathi because hiyo mrathi ilipo sinduliwa mimi nikakuwa mtu wa kwanza kwanza kupokea kama mkaji wa hapa alafu nikaanza sasa kupatilia chinso walikuja kupanda ya nyase uh, hata mimi nilikuwa mmoja wao ya kupanda kwangu saa hii uh, nimepanda heka tano kwa kweli hiyo mimi ni mtoto wa DRSP kwa sababu nimepanda ya nyase so imenisaidia kabisa this initiative of establishing pasture has also contributed to the improvement of environmental conservation by providing vegetation cover which has halted soil erosion in the program area the farmers also though growing pasture minimize cases where farmers move with their animals from one place to another a perfect example is Jerono's family that have significantly improved milk production by his livestock Masiwa nimeusa na somesha watoto hata nyumba hii kitu yote na kwa masiwa una na usa pas yote na kwa sawa na watoto shule sawa na mimi hata nyumbani ni sawa atuweze sasa peleka ngomba yetu kwenda eh, kwenda kwa umbale kwa sababu imetusaidia kabisa hata kwa maneno ya kutulipo banda nyase inatusaidia sasa maneno ya ngomba kuhama hama hakuna sasa maneno ya watoto kwenda eh, kwenda kujunga huko hapana sasa ngombe wanakulia kwa kwa, kwa shamba yao so imetusaidia sana access to water sources is all that pastoralists need because without it they are forced to walk for long distances in search of this precious commodity The program in the county has drilled and equipped boreholes to aid in the easy access to water. They have also done boreholes numbering about 11 in all. Most of them concentrated in Barwesa. We have uh, uh, Maramar, we have uh, the land, we have Kambinyasi, we have Cape Colony. Uh, we have Kasirma, Kamogoi, we have Kiboi and Chepkotut. In Marigut sublocation Barwesa ward the program has drilled and equipped the land borehole with a yield of 7 cubic meters the borehole provides residents with adequate water for livestock and domestic use the borehole benefits 300 households over 2000 cattle and over 3000 sheep and goats initially the residents would travel to river kirio in search of water about 7 kilometers away and getting water from there was an uphill task hiyo maji tulikuwa tulikuwa tukichimba chini mita tano chini watu wawili wanaingia ndani ndio mmoja anachota ya katikata hapa anashika ndungi alafu anapeana kwa huko juu sasa na hiyo maji iko kwa maji safi tena ni maji yenye kukunywa una unakuwa mkonjwa kwa typhoid ama amoebiasis wakati tuli wakati machimba hiyo maji kasaidia sasa wakati tuko tu nini 
Kacau tayu maju apa? Ini tayu buit aku na. Memalih sayu. Kacau nak buat cium ni. Kamu sanggah be. Kamu patah maju. Siapa kamu suka ni? Ini maju. Sila licin buat telan. Ata wakati buat telan, wenye walikuwa wamehama katika hii semu, wamerudi sasa. Kucha kuishi nyumbani mashamba yao. Watoto yetu ata wamepata pia njema. Wanasoma mzuri. Usavi tena kwa nyumbani. Tulikuwa atukwa na usavi. Na usavi tena ni afya. Kitu ya ajabu, maji sasa hata hata kinyesha. Semu wa kinyesha, unakuta hiko malaka hapa, mamtoni mtoni, nye maji inapita. Lakini wakati unatoa ngombe kwa boma, inaruka hiyo maji ya ikunye. Mbaka ikunye maji ya poo. Hiyo ni kitu tunashanga kapsa. The benefits derived from this borehole had made the residents happy because, in the past, the residents would slaughter weak animals before they died of thirst. Ketambo tulikuwa tunachincha, ilikuwa tunajua ni kawaida by much, ama bever wa ngombe wenge tunapotesa. Lakini kumbe wakati kuna maji kidogo, ile chakula wamepata huko mstunu malishone. Wapate maji ya kushikilia na kumbe ngombe inapata ngufu. For the last three years, tango mrati yansa, atu chawai kupotesa ngombe wengi file tulikuwa tunapotesa hapo kitambo. Under the land borehole, uh, we have a group called Cap Kieng, Visionary Youth Group. We have done an extension of this. So this tree nursery, we have done, we've just started with this very rare commodity, it's called Aborea. We are getting money out of this. We are earning a living because one seedling costs for 50 shillings and uh, we add of uh, 10,000 here, for which we've sold a good number. So we've made over 200,000 at the moment and we still have over 3,000 here. The youth who have border borders, it's also a source of income. You go and fetch water, you take to someone who is in 20 kilometers away, you get your 300 shillings, you are good to go. The management committee of the land borehole collects a fee of 100 shillings monthly per household to help in the daily running of the borehole. About 30 kilometers away from the land borehole, the program excavated and equipped the Capture Earth Dam with a design capacity of 25,000 cubic meters located in a previously water deficit area. The dam benefits about 847 people, 2,450 cattle and 4,300 sheep and goats with adequate water. Initially, uh, before this uh, uh, DRSLP came in and assisted the community in constructing this dam, uh, the people of this area used to suffer a lot when it comes to uh, getting water, clean water and water for livestock. They used to travel over 10 kilometers all the way to Lake Kapnaro uh, in search of water. Samani tulikuwa na shida, hatu kukuwa na maji, tulikuwa na tembea mpali, hasa kufika nyumbani, watoto wamechelewa kwenda shule, tulikuwa na watoto hata wanaesa tembea pila kukula kwa sababu wamechelewa. Hata kuoka, wanaenta tu. Lakini saaisi ni msuri kwa sababu tumepata maji. In their quest for water, the community set aside land in the locality in anticipation of a godsend group who would come and construct a water source. As the senior chief narrates, they were surprised when it was fulfilled through the DRSLP. Wakati nilipo naongoso watu area hii, tulikuwa na challenges mingi sana. Chuo ya maji. Watu walikuwa na tesa kwa maji sana. Kuna wakati tu wasi tuliketi na wasi hapa. Rika yangu na rika ya sawe. Na tu kapanga tu bata tam heria i. Tu kahongea na tu katenga heria. Atu kwa na tarachia tu tapata msaata wapi. Tuliona tu abatali tu tenge heria. Alapu akai stand by. Pengine mungu ata tuangalie. 
So tukakaa muta mrefu sana. Mbaka wakati wa 2016, yu watu wa TLA SRP walikuja hapa. Na tukahansa hii tamu yetu. At the moment, the water is enough. There is no much struggling. The animals, the livestock, the cows, goats, and the sheep, they get enough water. People who want to fetch water for domestic use, they get enough water, so there is no struggling. We are not going far for water, and, uh, and that's covered an area. As you see now, this place here, called uh, Crown Ngombe El, uh, El Futan, and they're doing well. Tukona furaha sana kwa sababu tumepata machi atuende mbali atuumu na mkongo tumefurahi sana The Artham father supports small irrigation downstream from where farmers cultivate various crops such as cowpeas green grams and maize to diversify their livelihoods in an area previously not supporting crop production to promote crop production to improve the incomes and nutrition status of the Baringo residents, DRSLP has rehabilitated Kiboi Irrigation Scheme, whose history dates back to 1938. The farmers at that time were using earth canals that were not lined. A lot of water would end up percolating into the soft soil. Kiboi Irrigation Scheme uh, was completed another time in 2019. The scheme is around 400 acres. This scheme at the moment is under production. The program did the lining, uh, did the index works to ensure that there, is, uh, there, there are no water losses and to ensure there is, uh, there is efficiency in terms of uh, water use. Before establishing the scheme, the farmers were willing to grow crops but did not have water. With the rehabilitation, Farmers are now growing different crops across the three blocks of the scheme, benefiting 137 households directly and over 1,080 indirectly. We have a lot of things. 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 We have a lot of Ayuwezefika Farmers in the scheme cultivate short maturing crops such as sweet potatoes, green grams, vegetables, and perennial crops such as pawpaws, mangoes, and bananas. In 2019, the program supplied farmers with seed and fruit seedlings worth 4.2 million Kenyan shillings to stimulate the scheme into production. We are giving them these seedlings to produce what we call a mother block, whereby the farmers now, even when the project has finished its period, the project time has elapsed, they can use these mother blocks to continue making up their own nurseries because we're also encouraging them to, to come up with a nursery. We want to even to, to start a nursery so that they can now be collecting the local mangoes eh? and then they make they put them in a, into a nursery and then they use the mother block to get the scions as after they have made the stocks and then they can craft it and then plant it locally and cheaply or sell it to even to other farmers. 
In block 3, we meet Joshua Yator. He decided to relocate to the scheme where he now lives with his family to utilize the water fully. From farming using irrigation water, he has been able to educate his children up to the university level. So much in a good job of In each, uh, each, each, each irrigation scheme, we are constructing what? A grading shed to help farmers so that they can grade and then they sell together so that they can bargain. They have bargaining power for, this, for these crops. And after the completion of that grading shed, we are expecting farmers to take their produce to the grading shed. We have a market every Wednesday. And uh, if one may visit such a market, you will find that a variety of produce from the farm is being displayed there and farmers are selling. This is, this is not where we are uh, aiming at. We are aiming at a situation whereby our farmers will be selling their produces from the hobbies. The scheme offices are not in the hobby market. We've also contracted, rehabilitated a uh, number of um, about um, about 13, 13 kilometers so that the farmers can be able to access the markets. So that now when they have their produce, especially like now in the grading shed, there is a road that we've rehabilitated by, by, by grading and uh, putting maram so that now the farmers can be able easily access the markets. When I look at the scheme and I focus on the future of this scheme, I am seeing a situation whereby these farmers or members of this area will not be depending on relief food. Instead, they will be supplying food to areas with hardships instead of receiving. All the projects of the committees, well trained by the county staff, and also even the county staff have been trained. So they have been cascading that knowledge to communities to ensure that those projects are, are remain sustainable and viable for a longer period of time. With the facilities and sustainability mechanisms that have been put in place by the program, there is hope for the pastoral communities. They are now more resilient to the vagaries of weather thanks to drought resilience and sustainable livelihoods program. The DRSLV have come. It has improved on how people live within Baringo. They have improved cohesiveness, improved security, and how people stay together. So we really appreciate what uh, DRSLV have done. They have touched lives and they have improved it. People are now paying their school fees. They are getting some income through the farming uh, uh, crops. They are getting income from livestock because uh, during those years, livestock during, uh, used to die every year. To natarajia kafsa miya kasingi na kama thana to talk to me change area. I love him. If you come and buy a new truck, na nunua, na enda kuasoko, na nunua, unatowa to kuako na kula. On behalf of the farmers and on behalf of the management of the scheme, I want to thank the DRSLB team for what they have done.